this type of dancing that you do? It's called contact improvisation. It's a movement form that draws from modern dance, gymnastics, yoga, and the martial arts. Two or more people will point contact and spontaneously allow momentum, gravity, flow, and energy to influence their movement together. Is this a recent invention? Yes, it got its start in 1972. Who invented it? Steve Paxton had some of the original ideas for it, but it was actually developed by a whole group of people working together in New York City for a month. Then it began to grow and change as different individuals took it to different parts of the country. Is there a technique of contact like there is in modern dance or ballet? Yes, there are skills that are taught, such as rolling, falling, weight-taking, and counterbalancing, among others. We do exercises to build strength and flexibility, and meditations to relax. All of this work feeds into the improvisation. How do you teach people how to improvise? One way is to give them physical tasks to do without detailed instructions. For instance, I may ask students to find ways to balance on each other's backs. There's no one right way to do that, so a student must improvise to find solutions to the problem. But how do you get them dancing improvisationally? Well, once students have learned a certain amount of basic skills, I present them a problem to work on, for example, experimenting with counterbalance. I then encourage them to stay counterbalanced for several minutes, and during this time I ask them to have each moment be complete, not just a transition from one position to another. They are then improvising a counterbalance dance. I see. Is this dance form safe? Basically, yes. Part of our skill work includes being physically and mentally prepared to adapt to any situation as it arises. You may be under me as a support one moment and gone the next. I learn to take care of myself. I understand you dance with a company in Minneapolis, Minnesota named Contact Works. That's right. How did you get your start? A small group of us who had taken contact classes with Mary Cerny wanted to continue working, but without a teacher. So we met twice a week to work on the skills we had learned, and also began to invent new ones. Did you start with the idea of becoming a performing group? No, not at all. Most of us were interested in the work itself, rather than in performing it. But somehow, in December of 1976, only two months after we had formed, we found ourselves getting an informal as an experiment. At that, we called ourselves Contact Work Group. Patrick, I'm going to stop interviewing now so I can be myself and put in my own two cents worth. We are Wendy Oliver and Patrick Scully, founding members of Contact Works, and we'd like to show you excerpts of the work we've done over the years. What you're seeing now is from our first performance. The four dancers here are Joanne Tillemans, Ellen Shelley, Whitney Ray, and me. You were injured at this point, Patrick, weren't you? That's right. I'd sprained my ankle pretty badly in a children's program. I almost lost my ankle. As I recall, this performance was part of a weekend workshop put together by two contact teachers, Mary Cerny and Joanne. There were several students who took classes all day Saturday and Sunday and then watched the group perform. It was a way of showing them what contact really looked like seems that our students are always asking what the real thing is. Here we are in our Bloomington Avenue studio, our first permanent home in July of 1977. This is Wendy and Whitney. We had quite a bit of landlord trouble at this place. Yes, Hugo, our landlord, didn't like us rattling his gas pipes every time we moved. After all the work we had done refinishing floors, painting walls and ceilings, we were out of a space within six months.
Joanne and Todd Lund. Todd had been added to the group a few months earlier. left the group in Minneapolis soon after this was taped to study dance therapy in graduate school. Let's see, it's March 1980 now, so Ellen's had her degree almost a year. She's a therapist in a Philadelphia hospital. This is November 1977 in David Critchlich's studio. I believe this is the last tape we have with Todd on it. He was a dentist just out of school and finally left the group to work full time in dentistry. Yes, at this point we had become more serious about working together, meeting three times each week. By this time we weren't questioning the validity of performing contact. No, it was more a matter of how we could clearly project what we were doing. In this piece, we worked with a score, or limitation, which happened to be a box taped to the floor. We decided ahead of time that we would dance in that box for about 10 minutes. Scores such as this one helped us to focus our performing.
This piece, a women's dance, was choreographed by Joanne as part of a concert about short works. We had become intrigued with the idea of setting movement that came from improvisation. Once you set contact improvisation, it's not improvisation anymore. So we started describing ourselves as performing contact and related material. This was Terry Cruzan's first performance with us. This concert was performed six times in our then recently acquired Cityscape studio. Jeff Bartlett did our lights, the first thing we'd tried anything so fancy. We also were rehearsing 20 hours a week by then, and it's stayed that way ever since. This is Killing Me Softly, choreographed by Whitney and me. We started with the specific idea of making a fun dance.
regrouping in New York City. At that point, we...